Hi and welcome to this four part group series on social transformation. I'm Wesley. And I'm Josh. And we're really excited about journeying through this series together. This is actually something that's really close to our hearts. So we're really looking forward to these next few sessions with you. And our vision at HTB is to play our part in the evangelization of the nation, the revitalization of the church and the transformation of society. And we're excited about impacting the lives of those in need in our city, of seeing culture change. And that's exactly what this series is going to look at. And we really could have looked at any part of the Bible in this series, because the whole Bible is about social transformation. But over these next four sessions, we're going to be journeying through Matthew's Gospel together. And we're going to be facilitating these discussions with you and your group as we look at what social transformation is and also what God might be wanting to do through you to transform our society. So you can go ahead and pause the video here and we're going to begin with some discussion time. And in your groups, we'd love for you to discuss what social transformation means to you. So go ahead, pause the video here and we'll see you again in a few minutes. See you soon. Hi and welcome back. Hope you had a good discussion in your group. So in this first session, in session one, we're going to be looking at Matthew 5 together. So if you want to grab your Bibles, we're going to read it together now. So Matthew 5 starts with Jesus's teachings on the Beatitudes, addressing our character. And then afterwards in verses 13 to 16, he goes on to talk about our influence. And that's what we're going to look at in our session together now. So I'm going to read that Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16, and I'm reading from the NIV. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So as we come to these verses, we see that we are meant to be salt and light in society. So what does Jesus mean by this? Why does he want us to be salt and light? Well, let's have a look at this. And we start with salt. Have you ever found um, as you've been cooking a recipe, you're on BBC Good Foods or wherever you get your recipes and found a recipe that calls for a whole ladle of salt. Now, my guess is you probably haven't. Just the smallest amount of salt makes a big difference to a meal. You know if it's there. And in the same way, we as Christians are called to be salt in community. Salt flavours. It makes a difference. And that's our calling too, Jesus tells us. We're called to be salt in our society. And then light. When a light goes on, you know about it. There's no amount of darkness that can hide light. Just picture it. You're in a dark room and a light goes on. You know about it. It stands out in the darkness. And in the same way, Jesus tells us that we are meant to be light in society. This teaching, salt and light, it reminds us that the gospel and ethics, they cannot be separated. The love of God is a love to be lived out. A love to be lived 
out in society. When I think about this, when I think about people who are salt and light, the first person that came to mind to me today was John, who's part of the Onslow Square 1030 service. And he was sharing this story recently. John has a shop and he noticed a lady who was standing outside his shop or sitting on a wall. And he noticed that she'd been coming and sitting on the same wall for a few days in a row. This particular day was really cold and not a nice day to be sat outside. And John went out of his shop and said, why don't you come in? Come and sit inside the shop. And she did. And he gave her a, a drink, a hot drink, and said, stay here for as long as you want. And she did. She stayed for quite a while. And then she finished her drink and said thanks to John, and she was on her way. And a couple of days later, she came back, and she had a box of chocolates. And she said, this is so kind, what you did for me. Thank you. No one else has done this. It might seem like a really small act to invite someone in to give them a hot drink, but it goes against the grain of culture. It's being salt and light. It's being Christ-like in society. It's being loving to others. And when you think about people in your own life, perhaps you've met people who you felt have been salt and light, people who pointed to Jesus with their actions, with their lives. What was it about them? What did it look like? We're going to take a few minutes in our groups again, having a discussion about this. So in just a second, I'll invite you to pause the video and I'd love for you to share in your group about people in your life who have been salt and light what that's looked like, what stood out about them and how they've pointed to Jesus with their life. So go ahead and pause the video here and uh, we'll come back in a few minutes. Hi everyone and welcome back. We're going to pick up the scriptures again and we're going to reread verse 16. Just as a reminder, Jesus says this, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, a call to be light in the world is not a call to a covert life, like a secret Christian like a spy and no one really knows that you're actually a Christian. But it's a call to be someone whose lives point to our Father in heaven. And at times this can feel like a lot of pressure. I might not really feel like I'm able to do that with my life. But I've always understood this light as being a mirror. I am not the light. But I know the light. I know Jesus and I know his love. And when I think about being a mirror, I think about reflecting that light, reflecting that love. So we don't do good deeds to be praised. We do good deeds that we may point to our Father in heaven, but others may praise him. And both of these images that we read in the text, salt and light, they speak against withdrawing. They speak against separation from society. And so the call to social transformation is a call to get involved. And whatever it is that you have responsibilities for, whether you're a stay-at-home parent, whether you're studying or working, Whatever those responsibilities are, as Christians, we have a responsibility for that. But we have a responsibility to do that as agents of social transformation, doing whatever we have responsibility for in a way that points to Christ, that people may glorify 
our Father in heaven. It's a call to get to know our neighbours, our colleagues, our people in, well, anywhere really, wherever you spend your time. It's a call to get involved, a call to march to a different drum, to point in a different direction, to a different purpose and ultimately to a different person, to point to Jesus. And God is inviting us to play our part in the transformation of society, to be salt and light. We are invited to be agents of social transformation. And we're going to have some more time discussing in our groups. And I'd like you to think about what this would look like for you to be salt and light. If you're working, I want you to imagine your job description and imagine an extra line. And that line being agent of social transformation. Or if you're a student, to think about what it means to study your subject and to be an agent in social transformation. A stay-at-home parent who is also an agent in social transformation, whatever it is that you have responsibility for. What does it mean for you to be an agent of social transformation? What does it look like for you to be salt and light? So we're going to take a few minutes in our groups discussing this together. What does it look like for you to be salt and light? So pause the video here and we'll take a few minutes discussing this together. Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you found that really helpful. And I'd encourage you to keep thinking about that this week and in the weeks to come. What does it look like for you to be salt and light? And to keep these conversations going in your group. Maybe you might want to share with other people and be talking about this with others. And the likelihood is that God is wanting you to be salt and light where you are right now. I'm going to pray as we finish tonight's session. Father, I thank you for everyone who's been involved this evening looking at these verses, having these discussions. And I pray that you would help us to be agents of social transformation, to be salt and light in society with our families, friends, colleagues, neighbours, those around us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.